This is the month of Rajab. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he would cite the moon, <coughs> he would recite this dua, when he would cite the moon of Rajab. Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Shaban wa balighna Ramadan. O oh Allah, bless us in the month of Rajab and Shaban and make us reach the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those. This month of Rajab also reminds us about the greatest or one of the greatest miracles that happened with Prophet Wasallam. The scholars differ on the timing of this. A lot of scholars or some scholars say it happened on the 27th night of Rajab, which is tonight. Some scholars say they did not know the exact date. Nevertheless, the day is not important. The month is not important. What is important is that the event actually happened. And it's a reminder for us about the greatness of Prophet Wasallam, but the greatness of the deen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, and about the gifts Prophet Wasallam brought us from this one of the greatest events or miracles he had in his life. <clears throat> See, when Rasulullah was invited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come very close to him, to his throne above the heavens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the Surah Al-Najm. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was going through a lot of turmoil and trauma which as Aisha radiallahu anha called as the year of sadness. That year, approximately the ninth year of the Hijrah, or the ninth year before he made the Hijrah, Khadija radiallahu anha passed away Abu Talib passed away. Khadija Rasulullah was a rock of his support for him in his house. Abu Talib was a rock of his support for him outside his house, defending him. And not only that, the people of Makkah, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, nobody was given as hard a time as I was given among any prophet. Nobody was as troubled as I was troubled. He goes to Taif in the year of sadness after suffering trauma after trauma, after the harassment, humiliation, non cooperation by the people of the city of Makkah. He decides to go to the city of Taif, about 120 miles north of Makkah to Lukarma. The people of Taif were known to be understanding, reasonable, the leaders were supposed to be respected and reasonable understanding. So Prophet ﷺ travels with Zayd in the Haritha to the city of Taif. When he reaches Taif, he meets the leaders of the Taif, city of Taif. But the leaders, contrary to the Arab hospitality, they treat him really bad. One of them says, are you the only one Allah chose to make a prophet? You're a liar. If you're lying, get away from my face. Prophet ﷺ was very sad. He was hurt. He got up, dejected, discouraged, sad. He was walking. But that was not the worst part of it. The worst part is about to begin. The leaders of the city of Taif, they let the youth and the street urchins Teenagers go after Prophet They tell him to throw stone. They told them to throw stones and rocks at him. The kids, the teenagers, came after Prophet Prophet had to literally run for his life. He was bleeding. The angels had never watched a scene like that before. The most beloved creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bleeding and running for his life. 
Prophet ﷺ ran for approximately five miles. Then on the outskirts of the city of Taif, when the kids, teenagers left him alone, they, they were tired throwing stones. Prophet ﷺ said the Harifa takes him under the shade of the tree, where the enemies of Islam would buy Shaiba, which the garden belonged to them. Rasulullah took refuge in their garden. Even they imagined enemies having pity and sympathy on Prophet ﷺ. At the time, Prophet ﷺ raised his hands in dua to Allah ﷺ, which shook the heavens in the sky. O oh Allah, it is my fault. I am weak and feeble, O oh Allah. To whom you have entrusted me to, O oh Allah. Your light that illuminates the heavens and the earth. Beautiful, profound words shapes the heavens in the sky. Angel Jibreel salam comes down with another angel and says, Oh Prophet of Allah, along with me, Allah has seen everything. Allah has heard everything what happened to you. Allah has sent an angel of mountains with me. If you order me, you will crush those mountains of Taif on the peak of Taif. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan He was sent as a mercy to the entire mankind. Mankind, not to take revenge and grudges have inside his heart. He said, if the people of Taif would not accept Islam, maybe the children or maybe the children's children will accept Islam. And exactly that is what happened to the people of Taif of Baruch Salif. Anyway, in a short time after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked at the <coughs> sadness and the broken heart of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah sends me to Jibreel alayhi salam to bring him up to the heavens and above the heavens, close to his throne. Jibreel alayhi salam comes, plucks out the roof from his house, picks up Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, takes him to Hadim, the second open heart surgery done in the history of humanity. The first open heart surgery done when the Prophet was four years old. Jibreel Islam comes, opens his heart, takes out the black spot, the shaitan from his heart. Now the second time he comes again, opens up his chest, takes out his heart, washes it with the water of Samsung, brought in the bowl of gold from Paris, because Prophet وسلم, is about to embark on a journey no man can dream of or imagine. Everybody knows people become famous and celebrities when they go in space, when they go to the moon. All of us know the first man to walk on the surface of the moon, me, I'm strong. It just comes out of our times. Imagine Allah taking Prophet Sallallahu beyond the universe. I mean, solar system, you just see a dot in the making of the galaxy. Just a small dot in one galaxy. Allah has created trillions and trillions of galaxies under the first heaven, Sama al dunya. When I say heaven, it's not the paradise, it's the sky. Be below the first sky is such a vast universe Allah has created. And a human being goes to the moon and it becomes an instant celebrity. Imagine that our Prophet is our Prophet, we are the Ummatis of this Prophet, Allah. Such a problem. Jibreel Islam takes it, he brings an animal called Burakh. Prophet said, smaller than the horse, bigger than a donkey, a mule. Takes him one instant of a moment, the rich by the Mahdas, Jerusalem. Allah is teaching us. Look, there is a transportation that can travel fast. None of us, none of the Muslims took the clue. And the non Muslims came up with the discoveries and innovations of fast planes and trains and cars. We never took a clue from that. But the Mahdas, why did Allah take Rasulullah to the likes of the Mahdas? Why did he take straight, took him straight up to the heavens and above? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show us at that time that Qibla direction was like the Mahdas. Allah subhanahu wa wanted us to show and to Bible Mahdas it seems itself that now, pretty soon, the direction you will have, you will turn towards God as Qibla. <laughs> Rasulullah saw innumerable number of prophets, thousands of prophets, 
125,000 prophets. They're coming and waiting for prophets of Allah. Jibreel al Islam takes his local blessed hands, takes him to lead Turaqah Salah. Aqama is given, Turaqah is prayed, led by Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imamul Anbiya Allah. Not just our Nabi, Nabi of all the Prophets, Nabi of all the Ummats. After that, the journey of Burah stop, stops. Because Burah is a means of worldly convenience. When you go about the space and beyond, Worldly transportation will not help. You have to have a spaceship, you have to have a space shuttle, you have to have an air pressure for your body to endure. Because if a person, how can Prophet Wasallam travel in space and beyond without a spaceship, space suit or a spaceship? Because when you go beyond the atmospheric pressure, the pressure Allah has created inside our bodies, which is balanced by the outside atmospheric pressure, when you go in the space, beyond the atmospheric pressure, no pressure, what happens? The pressure in the body comes out, bursts out like a balloon and a bomb and the body explodes. Not only that, the temperature in space at zero degree Celsius, water becomes ice. The temperature in space is average 3 minus 300 degrees Celsius. You can put a banana in a space which freezes instantly and you can hear a name on the banana with the hammer and you will not go inside and become so hard. How can Prophet Wasallam, without a spaceship suit or a spaceship travel in the space and above and beyond? Humanly impossible. Allah answers this question. Subhanallah asra bi abdihi layyam mir masjid haram il masjid asa. How can any human being or the Prophet travel in space? Allah says, Subhan, Subhan. The only surah in the Quran believing is Subhan. Meaning Allah is pure about anything. Allah is pure of all transportation. Of all freezing temperatures in space. Doesn't need any spaceship. Subhanallah <coughs> asra bi abdi. He took his servant. When we show humility, respected listeners, when we show humility to Allah, when we show humility to our fellow human beings, Allah will raise us. Like he raised Prophet saying, He was my servant. I took him, not to read. Jibreel is the creation of Allah, the Khalif to him. أقول خلي على أسرق الله يوم الصبح في الخبيه وفي الوحيد. الحمد لله الحمد لله في العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم أما بعد. Do not have time to describe this beautiful event, respected listeners. But let me tell you, let me try to cut it down. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reaches the seventh heaven, the seventh sky. Not the paradise when I say heaven, the seventh sky. And after meeting prophets on different skies, what the language says is heavens. On the seventh heaven, on the seventh sky, in each of the heavens when you reach, the first heaven, Adam alayhi salam, second heaven, Yahya alayhi salam, third, Yusuf alayhi salam, then Idris alayhi salam, then Harun alayhi salam, then Musa alayhi salam, the sixth heaven. All these prophets were sent by Allah as welcoming parties to receive Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the entrance of these heavens. But when he reached the seventh heaven, no one showed up to receive him. No prophet showed up to receive him. Showed up to receive him. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw on the seventh heaven Baitul Ma'mum, a Kaaba exactly like the Kaaba on the ground. Above the seven, on the seventh heaven. On around the Kaaba, 70,000 angels are making tawaf. In the Jewish state of Prophet of Allah, these 70,000 angels will not get another opportunity until the day of judgment to do tawaf because another 70,000 angels are waiting in the line. Rasulullah sees the angels doing tawaf and he sees an old man with a big white beard sitting with his hands on his knees with his back against the Kaaba. Rasulullah says, who is that old man? 
et j'ai mis les statistiques sur Father, Prophet, Ibrahim, et les Now, Allah is teaching us the position and status of our fathers. The father does not come to receive the son out of respect, the son goes to the father. Prophet Sallallahu walks towards Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam, touches his hands while he's sitting down. Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam gets up, hugs him, kisses him. Marhaban Ya Rabbi Salih, Marhaban Ya Ibn Salih. Welcome, O pious Prophet. Welcome, O son of the Prophet. And then Ibrahim A.S. says, Convey my salams to your people. Convey my salams to your people. And tell them, tell them, the paradise, land of paradise is barren, beautiful, luscious, fertile, but it's barren, it's empty. The trees of Paris are Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allah The more you say, the more the trees will be planted in your Paris. After that, Ajib al Salam takes him to a point called the Quran, and it is a Sidra to the Muntaha. A point beyond which Jibir al Salam says, no creation has ever gone before. Not even angels have gone from you. If I take one step, I will burn to ashes, he says. No reason for me to go beyond this. What prophet Allah has given us respect? Such a prophet. And he takes his way so lightly, which can take us beyond Siddhartha Munda, so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah was alone beyond that point. Very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The conversation starts. Attahiyatu billahi. Allah is telling Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Attahiyatu billahi wa salawat wa tayyibat. As-salamu alayka ayyuhal nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you, O Prophet. And may the mercy and blessings of Allah be upon you. At that time, moment, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not forget anyone of us. He didn't forget anyone of us. He responded to Allah, As-salamu alayna wa ibadillahi salihin. O Allah, may your peace and mercy and blessings be upon all those servants of your righteous and pious servants. Allah may respond to us. When the angels heard this conversation, they said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan which has become part of our salat. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu says, Allah subhanahu wa gave three gifts to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When a person receives gifts at that stage, at that level, so close to Allah azza wa jal, the gifts have to be really important. Precious, priceless, The first gift Allah gave to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was Salat. Five times Salat. The Sahaba were so excited and happy, they were ecstatic when they got this gift from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi They said, now we can draw from the treasures of Allah to Salat. You pray five, Rasulullah said, you get the reward of 50, because the 50 was originally given. You pray five, you get the reward of 50. Such a gift as forgiveness. As salatu qurrata ayn, Rasulullah said, Salat is the coolness of my eyes. Ida hazada ha'amun faza'a ila salat. Whenever any difficulty comes to me, I turn to salat. As salatu bittahi khaza'in, Salat is the treasure, is the keys for the treasures of Allah. Such a gift from Allah. If Allah took Prophet so close to him, so close to him, the mi'raj, the qurb of Prophet the nearness of Prophet was so close to Allah, Allah has also given us the qurb and nearness respect to this in our salat. In the sajid, 
يَجْزِلُ قَدَمَ يُرْبَحْنَانِ Rasulullah said, when a person does sajda, when a person puts his forehead on the ground, he is closest to Ar-Rahman. He is closest to Ar-Rahman. Okay, how close can you get to Allah? Even then, even then, 95% of us do not pray five times salat. 95% of the Muslim Ummah does not pray five times salat. And I'm trying to say this out of you know, her pain, concern. And all of us should have this and have this. When we refuse to bow down to Allah the Khalid on the ground, put our forehead on the ground, we're being made to bow down before the Bakhluf. No excuses, respected Muslims. No one to blame but our own selves. If I'm missing my Fajr Salah, if I'm missing my Fajr Salah, I cannot blame Shaitan for that. I cannot blame Shaitan for that. And Allah has given us such a gift. How can we miss it? When Allah has made our sustenance this easy through the Salah, how come our yaqeen, serenity, faith is so weak? This month of Rajat respected business. Let it remind us to be punctual and regular in our salah. To make up the salats we have missed. Allah is forgiven, but He just doesn't forgive like that. If He wants, He can. But He has made the means of forgiveness. If we have, if we have missed salat in our lives, let's try to make them up so that Allah can forgive for making an effort. Pray to Rakat Qadha Salat for the ones we have missed before for just salat. It becomes easy, doesn't become a burden. Salat has come to relieve us of the burdens we have made a burden upon ourselves. Pray to Rakat Salat of Fajr you have missed before Fajr Salat. Pray for Rakat after Zuhur you have praised you for, for the missed Zuhur Salat. Pray for Asr before you pray Asr. Pray three Maghrib extra after you pray your Maghrib regular for. Pray for Isha after you for Isha. That way we make up all the missed Salat. And even if you die before that, Allah will count us among those who try to make an effort and Allah will forgive us Isha. The second gift Allah gave is the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Amana Rasul bima unzila ilayhi mi rabbi wa minu. Kullul amana billahi wa malakihi till the end of the words. Rabbana la dua khidna inna sina wa bakhtarna. Allah taught us how to make dua. Allah taught us what to ask Allah. Allah told us, you ask, I will answer, I will give it to you. The third gift Allah gave the Prophet ﷺ was Allah said to Prophet ﷺ, forgive all of your people. I will forgive all of your people except those who commit partners, who associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who commit shirk. May Allah subhanahu wa give us understanding. May Allah subhanahu make this month of Rajab, bless us in this month of Rajab, to make us punctual in Salah, our families punctual in Salah. May Allah bless us in Shaban. Give all the blessings Allah is, is, is willing to give it to us. And may Allah make us reach the month of Ramadan. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatu wa bila khirati hasanatu wa bila adha adha. Rabbana adhuwa fitna fina sina wa ta'ana. Rabbana wa la tahmi alayna isra'an kama hamita wa ala ladhina min khadrina. Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la ta'aqada lana bi. Wa'afru anna wa afir lana wa arhamna. Anta maulana fansur ma'ala al-qawbi al-kafirin. Ilal Allah, in Allah ya'adu bil hadhi wa al-ihsan. وَإِنَّا إِلَى الْقُرْبَى وَإِنَّا إِلَى الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُكَرِّ الْبَغِيْ يَعِيدُكُمْ لَا لَمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ فَاذْكُرُوا مِنْ أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَالشُّرُّ لِيَوَلَا تَذْكُرُونَ وَأَقِيْس